Hey guys, Kevin Shaw here, Editor-in-Chief of Mopar Connection Magazine. We're here at Fuel Tech in Georgia to check out a very unique 72 CUDA, as well as all the really cool high-tech EFI tuning and ECM tuning that these guys do here. They do a lot of supercars, a lot of really rare, really unusual builds. I mean, they've got a compound turbo jet ski that makes 1200 horsepower. They've got a twin turbo Corvette C8. They've got some crazy, crazy builds here. So we're gonna take you on a little bit of a tour. We're gonna to walk around the 72 Cuda. We're gonna introduce you to Anderson Dick, the president of Fuel Tech, who lives here in Georgia, and show you just some of the most amazing cars that we've seen in a really long time. It's not all Mopar, so don't get upset, but there are some really neat stuff. It'll definitely make the car guy and every one of you tickled. Hey guys, real quick, we got a whole mess of new Mopar Connection magazine t-shirts for sale. They're up here at the Mopar Connection store. We're gonna put the link up in the corner and we have some really cool designs. The first one is my favorite and this is called the Order of the Big Block. And as you can see, you're getting the full rotation of the Big Block firing order right here on your back. And in case you forget, you can have your buddy turn around and you can set your firing order the right way and not mess up. Second, we've got the what does Mopar mean to you? And it's a whole script of different definitions that have been some of the most popular ones that we've seen over the years. It's not all of them, but it's a snapshot of some of the best ones. So show your loyalty to Mopar by wearing it loud and proud. Grab yours at the store today. We'll put the link up in the corner. Hey guys, my name is Anderson. Uh, I'm the owner and founder and CEO for FuelTech. If you have heard about us, that's good. If you haven't, I'm going to introduce you some of our products. So FuelTech actually is a ECU manufacturer company. I, long story short, I started the company about 22 years ago on my bedroom apartment in South Brazil. Uh, it was just a, a small project, college degree, uh, and ended up becoming a more than that, and uh, right now we are actually established worldwide. We have the manufacturing and the, most of the R&D development in Brazil. Uh, you guys are here filming on our U.S. headquarters. Uh, I I live in U.S. for uh, for seven years already, and uh, it's been uh, a very very great journey. Uh, Futec being recognized already as the, one, the most one of the most uh, recognized issues for racing. Uh, not only cars, but uh, bikes and jet skis as well. Uh, and uh, besides that, I'm I'm in love. I, I'm really passionate about what we do, and everyone else in the company is the same. So here in Georgia, we actually have the R and D is in, important because we we have every car. There is a reason behind we are developing something. So I I will talk about the Cuda, but uh, the jet skis, the CA, the Supra, the Opala, the electric Mustang. So all the projects we're building here, they usually are used to develop some features, some products, some electronics, some knowledge. Uh, even our team, when we actually troubleshooting or tech supporting people, we, we need to learn and we need to know what to do and how to better help the client. So it's a mix between passion and motivation and uh, do cool things as well. So a lot of them are as well helpful in marketing because even when I built the first the jet ski, the compound turbo jet ski, I was like, okay, I need to show with something that people will comment about. And uh, we always try to do something different and outside of the ordinary. Yeah, so as FuelTech was saying, we have uh, 45 employees. So from that, we have uh, all the inventory distribution for North America, for uh, Australia, Middle East, and other areas in the world. Uh, we also have the tech support, which is really relevant because not only we have local tech support here, but we do we do have two trailers that we travel for races literally every week and we have one or two trailers out. So trying to cover most as we can and, and to be close to the racers. Uh, as well, we have the, the R&D and the R&D is where we develop application, we develop uh, products, we test, we have the Hub Dino here, which is also a very important uh, service we offer here. The Hub Dyno is interesting because uh, we were one of the first ones in the world that provide a service for like a 5,000 horsepower course. And, but what we differentiate over a regular Dyno is that we, we book a full day and we have between two to five high, very experienced techs, including me, including all the team here to go over whatever is the problem, whatever is the challenge, whatever is the development on the car. 
and uh, that's why we have clients coming from from Canada, from California to anywhere in this country or or, or continent to to use the diner. It's usually we have been very successful where the cars leave the diner and go to the racetrack and really uh, record it off the trailer, let's say this way. So all this, and obviously we have the operations here. We have the, uh, the marketing department is very relevant. We try to do as much videos and content and training. We have the FT education department here. So we have the training here. Uh, every two weeks we have a, a three or five day training. Uh, the people got to spend the whole week here uh, learning on the room, also getting to the dyno and testing what they learn and all the connection on that, all that. Obviously we have all the operations like the financial operations and operations uh, and that's how we operate here. The Brazilian headquarters is actually where we manufacture and develop the product. So over there we are right now about 203 employees. Uh, with over there, we, we have like a, a 80,000 square feet building. We just announced it last year, uh, November last year. It was a very proud moment because we, over 22 years of history, we, we grow very organically and, uh, through where we are right now. And uh, just from those 200 employees, uh, about 55 are engineers on development. So we have probably one of the largest R&D teams in the world of this industry. And the, uh, and the good thing is like we've been advancing so well on, on technology and products and development and the, over the last few years that we're, we're actually leading many of the areas of the, the development of the electronics on the racing applications. Even have a one cylinder scooter there, either a, or a four stroke turbo, one cylinder, a two stroke uh, as well. And it doesn't matter if it's a V8 with 5,000 horsepower, a newer modern car with all, all the electronics in the world that you need to control, or even like the Super, we have a 10 speed transmission, this is very complex to direct operate. Uh, but we also have like old school cars, which we love. And obviously, this, this has been improved a lot on the technology. I'm going to show more details, but uh, we always we we cannot really apply the the issue to any any kind of application. Uh, this car, it's in my opinion one of the most iconic iconic uh, Moscow cars from the that era. Uh, I always, you know, I'm a very my collection is very diverse. I I like to have every single car of era or different movements. And uh, I was always missing a Moscow car, <laughs> and uh, I really liked the, this car because it really brings a lot of a lot of people comes and I'll tell you something from my collection. That's the car that I got more comments when I driving around, especially in the gas station or that kind of place, or on the soccer with the kids, uh, which is which show how much people love these cars, uh, which how much this car was really important on the era, and uh, even me not being an American. You know, I'm, as my accent can show, I'm Brazilian, uh, but I live, uh, I'm, I'm a car guy everywhere. So for me, it was even harder even to see a car like that in, when I was a kid. So I was only being able to see that on TV. So the Cuda definitely is on the top list for, for, for this era. Okay. This is a 1972 Cuda, uh, 340 uh, manual. Uh, which is how we, it was a matching numbers uh, ads and all the parts I, the, the original owner wants to kill me in some perspective <laughs> because I did some modifications. But besides of that, this car, uh, uh, it, it wasn't originally this color. Uh, it was painted by the, the previous owner uh, about uh, 14 years ago. And he did a, a beautiful work with his son. It's like a summer project or something like that. And they, uh, this, this car was originally black, and uh, he turned it into this uh, the, the color, which is the sublime green. And uh, we figured this actually this week because we were trying to buy paint to do some small uh, chips uh, correction, and uh, we ended up figuring the color. But originally, when I bought it, was a 340, pretty much. It originally was a six pack. But it was converted to EFI already, okay. and uh, which was obviously my intentions anyway. So we first I drove around, I, I had fun, I, I learned about the car, understand. Then the first step was really, I, okay, let me make sure I get the max I, I can get from this car. So I dyno it originally. It, the previous owner had the engine built 
with a different camshaft, but stock internals, uh, new pistons, and he was had the engine done about 15 years ago. And when we done it, it made uh, I think it was 300 wheel horsepower, something like that, maybe 270. It was it was impressive. Honestly, we were not expecting that, but it still had the distributor, still had a, a, a TBI or a, tr a carburetor style throttle body injection on top, uh, and. Um, and always we so we did the fuel tech to control that everything that's also a good challenge because a lot of people prefer like that but i was always in my head uh, looking for having a car that would be really with something that stands up stands out outside of the hood actually in this case that i could show and and, and have a uh, a very classic or not say classic but an old school modification which okay. is like a roots blower. Yeah, so uh, this car had some good improvements already from the previous owner. He had like uh, the front cradle was replaced by a modern one. The suspension as well uh, has uh, the shocks and some of these improvements. It had some larger wheels, which I, uh, I think the Torx, the like 18s. I didn't like those too much because they were too big for the car. So. I, I, I obviously found, I mean, I, I, I choose these classic ones, uh, the, uh, the Rally Mopar, right? And uh, with uh, some right tires, uh, I'm still trying to fit the right the rear tire, maybe rubbing some, uh, but I, I will perfect that. I, I really like the, the, the large, the bigger tire on the back, but uh, once I had the car running with the fuel injection, I, the next step was really, okay, what, do I, what can I do more on the engine? So, then I started searching and I, I, I ended up buying the BDS blower, uh, it's 871, uh, obviously the, the throttle, I, I really like this and uh, I did the, I really like the bird catcher uh, uh, throttle body system and uh, what I did, I, I got a, a progressive throttle linkage so it really uses one, uh, one throttle only for 30% and then it actually opens all the four and I am absolutely impressed with how well it drives with that kind of system it, it, it autos it drives better than it drove before with a single throttle body uh, then the fuel injectors were something uh, we obviously wanted to promote it's our products uh, we developed these in fuel injectors it's uh, 80 pounds injectors fuel tech ft injectors uh, but this car runs on e85 so it, 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 it needs some of that and actually i ended up figuring the injectors were almost too small because I had to actually bump the base fuel pressure to 75 psi to be able to hold the bar because I don't have injectors under the, the blower, it's only on top. And that was another challenge because we want to make like the drivability, the cold start, the idling as much perfect as we could. And I I'm probably can say that this car has a great drivability. <laughs> then the other update was the distributor. The distributor for ignition was something I really, I don't like. It's, uh, I live with that, if there's so many cases you have to use, but having the ability to run a crank trigger with uh, individual coils is so much modern and easier and cleaner. So I switched to eight smart coils uh, and had them over the valve covers. Uh, obviously that gave me better, I mean, a higher precision on ignition, it, it runs better, smoother, cleans. Uh, so that that one of the things I like a lot. Yeah, so I also uh, updated the fans to put a brushless fans with PWM control. The one thing I hate when the fans kick kick in and, and you can feel the alternator, so that's actually very smooth. And uh, I, I always like to bring some of the modern good controls or electronics to the older projects. Uh, after that, actually, it was time to put the blower on and uh, really make sure you all run well. I added an idle control valve, uh, so it's, it has an idle control valve hidden behind the blower, so I can actually PWM and, and adjust idle. And I even also have another, uh, we have a timing strategy to control the surge, and uh, it's really, if you notice, the idle of the car is flat, 1000 mm. RPM or 900 RPM, and uh, I have the timing fighting between zero and 35 so fast that the engine cannot uh, surge up and down. So that strategy was very helpful because uh, whoever has a blower car knows how hard it is to not surge, especially on street car. And uh, if that's like an automatic, it's, it's even harder. Uh, by some perspective, you load more the engine, you, you can 
easier easier control the surge, but at the same time it can be even uncomfortable with the surge. So uh, adding all that technology with for the car was was good. Also having fuel pressure sensor, oil pressure sensor, uh, drive shaft speed. So I was able to really diagnostic and really read all the parameters of the engine and make it really safe because I still have a stock short block here and uh, even though I, I run 18 pounds of boost uh, and knowing how risky it is uh, I, I want to make sure I'm reading the oil pressure and make sure I can anticipate any, anything before it be, being catastrophic. And you're running the FT600? Yes, I'm okay. running the FT600 but the 550 will do the job. Okay. Uh, even if I will be a little bit fire. So the, the, the basic difference between the 550 and 600 and the 450 are the amount of inputs and outputs. They all share the same uh, software and controls. But uh, you are, we're able to run, in this case I'm running 8 injectors, 8 coils, uh, the fans, the fuel pump. Um, what else? Yeah, that's basically it on the control side. This car has AC as well, but that's kind of uh, outside. On the, uh, it had AC when we actually pulled the, put the blower, we had to remove the AC compressor and that's one thing I need to finish on the car. But I, I'm going to add an electric comp AC oh. compressor under the fender here. So that's the plan. And the other thing, then once I start driving the car, I figure the here and I think it's a 411. Uh, yeah, the here gear. And uh, that's not really comfortable driving on a highway at 70 miles per hour. It's, it was like revving 3700 RPM and I was like screaming. The engineer uh, was not really comfortable driving. So I had, okay, I need to do something. Either I, I switch the here end or I, I switch the transmission. Then I actually decided to buy uh, the new TKX, the Tremec, the TKX transmissions, which I'm, I'm very impressed with how good they developed that transmission. I think it was released in about 2020. Mm -hmm. So it's a new transmission. And uh, I bought it from Silver Sport and they supplied the whole kit like bolt on. And uh, I was really impressed. And uh, I got with the flywheel, the clutch and everything. So the clutch you can drive literally on the clutch pedal. I mean, I can I can park on the clutch pedal. Uh, it's it, to me it's impressive because some, some cars you you don't have the drivability proper and uh, that really pulls you off especially if it's a car that you, you're using only once in every four weekends and you want to drive and it doesn't drive well or doesn't run well so it has to be perfect on the key that's my concept now you told me you were making how much of the rear wheels 570 570 at the rear wheels so you estimate what's that at the, at the flywheel uh, Six, high 600s. High 600s? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Speaks a lot to the Silver Sport Tremec oh, yeah. and, and to the kit. Yeah, no, and I, I think they're spec to 600 torque. I uh, believe so. And I think it was about that, but uh, usually all manufacturers, they have a safety cost, uh, uh, in my opinion, and uh, we should, I, I'm, I think I'm very safe. The shifting is also great. I felt, uh, I can confirm that the, the shifting is better than the older transmission. They did something really nicer. On that perspective as well. So, and having the fifth gear, obviously, that's that's where I got the fifth gear with a 0 0.68 ratio, and that gave me like now I can cruise at 70 miles per hour at uh, I think 2,000 RPM, 2,200 RPM. So it makes a lot more uh, nicer the cruising. Now there's one more thing that uh, I don't know if Anderson was planning on, but uh, why don't you show him what's on the back of your shirt? 
Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> he likes his car so much, he got a shirt made for it. <laughs> he said that was the first one. He says, this is the prototype. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you one. <laughs> but you know what, I, what I've been doing with my cars is I figure, uh, since I have my YouTube channel and it's in Portuguese, but a lot of people watch, uh, and I also have a lot of, I, I like to share on social media of my projects uh, there's always more people crazy like we are. And uh, one thing I, I figure is like everyone asks, okay, let's do a shirt. And the first shirt I done was uh, with the Ferrari. I have, I have a Ferrari F355 that I, 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 I found it, abandoned it, and uh, upgraded with a tour. We did a big project. That, that car, uh, the shirts were like, no, everyone wanted them. So I started doing it for every single project. <laughs> very cool, very cool. All right, so where can people find you? So you can find us at fueltech.net. That's our website for our products, and uh, you have all the phone numbers and information for the team. If you want to talk, and also our YouTube channel at Fueltech USA, that has a lot of videos showing the products. And on my personal, I have Anderson Dick, uh, uh, Instagram, YouTube, and I share a lot of stuff over there. It's, it's, you guys are welcome to contact me if you need any information. On, I'm, I'm glad to help. I you 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 saw by my projects. I'm a heavy car guy as well that I really love the diversity of the projects and, and really love some innovation. to visiting Fuel Tech and checking out Anderson's Cuda, he also is going to let us hang out and watch him dyno tune this Supra. Can you tell me a little bit about what's going on on this car? Sure, sure. God, man, this guy, this car is obviously a dream for all who loves cars, the Japanese cars, the JDM from the 90s. So this is a right-hand drive Supra. Uh, Supra. Uh, we built a full billet engine or a full billet, uh, full, a billet block. Uh, stroker, 3.4 liter uh, cams. It's technically it's all race engine, the same engine as uh, 3,000 horsepower 2JZ we just died a few weeks ago. Uh, <laughs> 3,000 horsepower. Right? Yeah, we, d we did in a race car. Obviously, this has a smaller turbo. This turbo is rated for 1,200 horsepower. Uh, but this car has also some uh, some cool things that we implemented, like. We have a 10-speed transmission. That's, oh. That transmission is from the new Camaros. Okay. Uh, and we've been working on the, on the development of controlling that transmission and as a completely standalone. So 
uh, we are so in love with these transmissions that we pretty much swap it into many of our cars. We can see on the parking lot here probably six cars with those transmissions. The All with the 10-speed? The 10-speed, either the Ford or, or the Chevy. Wow. They do share the same control of the valve body uh, and they work amazing. Particularly now, I had a problem with this car a few weeks ago on the dyno where the, the, the carbon fiber drive shaft was actually slipping. Oh. Then we, we actually put a stock transmission here now uh, and I had the build transmission. So now we're going to see how much horsepower the stock transmission will hold on this 2JZ. We're actually debating if it will be around the 1000 horsepower range okay. or not. Well, we're going to see uh, a turbo Supra hopefully spin a thousand rear wheel rollers. Uh, hopefully see, yes. Yeah. Okay, so you actually got 27 pounds? Yeah, 26, 27 here. Okay. Yeah, I was looking why it was dead, and we had a limiter actually at 7,500 RPM. Okay. We were figuring, but... 20. That was a safety limiter just for the first pass? Or? Kind of. I'd okay. say uh, I wasn't expecting that, but uh, I will... It's, it's, it's okay. Surprised it's, not, it's not a problem. Okay. But it made more boost actually, it made 27 pounds, so... Okay. And more in line with... Uh, with that power, I okay. Was like, okay, maybe now are you going to be doing another pull with that? I'll or do, I would do another pull and, and see if I can run like a 9000 rpm, okay. And then then I will bring boost up and okay, see until the, it either stops the turbo because the turbo speed now is the turbo speed went to 118,000. Okay, uh, let me see what this turbo can actually hold or it's specified. So the oh yeah, they say max speed one hundred eighteen thousand. <laughs> and you already went past that. I oh, actually already there, but okay. No, no, worries. <laughs> no worries. All right, ten four. up our tour of fuel tech and our walk around with anderson's awesome cuda i hope you guys really enjoyed it i really want to thank anderson for your time and let me stay here all day we got to see the dyno poles of the supra got to walk around all of his project cars got to check out some really really cool stuff so if you enjoyed this video please go ahead and leave a like maybe leave a comment share with your friends help us grow the channel and if you want more awesome mopar content please go over to www.moparconnectionmagazine.com where new articles are written and published every single day, Monday through Friday, entirely subscription free to you. We'll see you there.